So on this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over the human endocannabinoid system, how it relates to the CB1 and CB2 receptors. All right, so focusing on these receptors, just as a side note, the CB2 receptor here is involved with the immune system found in the thalamus, and the CB1 receptor is in the brain there. So we're going to be talking about two different locations within the body. So realize that there are different types of cannabinoids, and a lot of people get hung up on just one or two that they like to focus on, but realize there are many types. And, you know, we've got the side chain of, all right, there's a whole bunch of different types here. These are produced not only by cannabis, so keep that in mind as well, that cannabis does produce these, but there's other uh, plants and fungi and other species basically that do produce these as well. Liverworts, for example, rhododendron are just some examples. Cannabinoids though, are defined generally as specific species of terpenoids, molecules that has the potential to interact with the endocannabinoid system, typically abbreviated ECS. Now, don't forget about the terpenes. Remember, there are also some terpenes that interact with the endocannabinoid system as well. One established example of this effect is the beta carophyllene, which has been identified as a CB2 agonist, acting as an allergistic way to suppress the suppressor of neuroinflammation. And with this property, this makes it a candidate for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Remember, an agonist is going to allow for the activation, the binding and activation of that molecule. And an agonist is going to either lessen that activation or block it entirely. Now, cannabinoids are inside of you. Your own body contains a system of, of endogenous receptors and ligands, which work to regulate a vast number of cellular functions in tissues throughout your body. They do play a vital role with these uh, cannabinoids in maintaining homeostasis, so they are very important. Keep in mind here, looking at the graphic, we are talking about the synapse area here, which is that area between those two uh, neurons, and this does work on a negative feedback loop system. Um, at least two of these cannabinoids produced by your own body are called anamide, ana uh, which is a, an analog to the uh, THC molecule. And this really long name here, 2-arachidonylglycerol, uh, is an, an analog, an autogenous analog to the CBD molecule, both produced by cannabis. Now, specifically for these uh, receptors, I try to provide a nice little graphics here to try to uh, separate out the two target regions and classify them a little bit more for this CB1 and CB2 receptors as these do determine the behavioral effects when it's consumed by the individual, as well as the effects of your own body to these cannabis receptors. So it's these receptors that are the reason why Different people may have different um, after effects or uh, different responses uh, to this because of their receptors might be slightly different from one individual to another. Now, looking here, just highlight here the CB1 receptor. Uh, they are expressed most densely in the central nervous system and are largely responsible for the meeting of the effects of the cannabinoid binding uh, to the brain there. So there's, there's a lot of depolarization going on. It has to result in a decrease in either glutamate or a GABA release, which are examples of neurotransmitters. So with this research, when we're looking at the CB1 uh, receptor and their kind of in, in, inhibitory effects, uh, it's looking like that this receptor might be able to inhibit or play a role in inhibiting neurotransmitter release in general, looking at the physiology of this particular CB1 receptor. Now, in contrast, if we're looking at CB2 here, remember, these are found in the immune cells, particularly cells of the macrophage lineage. These receptors only indirectly affect neural, uh, neural function. Modulating CB2 signaling could be promising for the treatment of various inflammatory conditions, uh, so that's an important note to keep in mind, and this is why we need more research on this topic. Now, kind of tying this all in, another kind of graphic here, looking at the human endocannabinoid system, THC, CBD, and CBN. Again, we're talking at the neurotransmitter level, these chemicals and how they interact with both the brain as well as you know, uh, the immune system. So there's a lot that goes on. This is a very complex system, and hopefully with more research, we'll be able to understand this even better.